Hello everybody, it's Chaz in Omaha here with another build guide for you. This time we have the Shadow Daggers Blade Dancer. We'll just go ahead and go right into some basic gameplay. So you sink, and then you shift. Every time you sink, you generate a whole bunch of shadows, and when you shift, it makes them blow everything up around you. Um, you can throw up to two times between sink, shift, and if you ever do what I just did, where you sink twice without shifting in between, you're gonna break your mana, so don't do that. And then on bosses or bigger enemies, you can throw smoke bomb down and do your sink shift and go back into the smoke cloud. You wanna stay in the smoke cloud as much as you can because it ups your defense and offense while inside of it. As far as strengths of this build goes, it is an exceptionally fast echo clearer. It's probably, among the fastest, if not the fastest in the game, you can see how fast my character moves. And you can kind of just like shift through echoes if you don't want to kill anything. Or you can just sync shift and keep moving and everything will just die behind you. Another strength of this build is that it doesn't actually require any specific gear to be good. You could play this with all just normal gear and it will function just fine. You don't even need special idols. As far as weaknesses go, there are a lot of uniques for the strongest version of this build that have very high, or excuse me, they have very low LP chance. And that means that it's really hard to gear this like super optimally. Um, the other potential weakness, if you're playing the high health version of the build, you can struggle with mana just a little bit. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and go through the skills. We're going to start with Shuriken, because this is kind of how you're going to want to start leveling. And you basically just go directly as fast as you can to Chakram and Keen Throw. By the time you have that, you're pretty much just going to move on to Umbral Blades, so that's all you really need to worry about. Next, we have Umbral Blades. I would go ahead and switch right to Umbral Blades as soon as you get it. Um, but you could stay Shuriken for a while if you feel like it. It doesn't really matter that much. So the first thing you want to do is go to this Cacophony of Steel so that you have the spinning blade things. Then you want to get Precision Cuts and the Explosive Blades so that you can just target them and spam throw them. After that, you're going to want to get the Shadow Daggers thing, and this is when you're going to start, like, blasting things with Shadow Daggers. After that, you're going to want to go into Umbral Redknit so that your shadows start dropping Umbral Blades after you shift. And then finally, you can go into either the blade storm thing or the explosion area, however you want. It, it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. It's just kind of a playstyle thing and what you find to be more convenient for you. The last thing you want to do is this cold stuff at the end. It's not even really necessary. It's just that there's nowhere else that like points really help. And if you are playing the low health build, this does gain you a bit of ward by freezing stuff. All right, next we can go ahead and talk about shift. For shift, you're going to want to go immediately into the shadows. Then you want to go into the swift recovery to get a whole bunch of mana back, into the immunity with elusive. Now, it's important to keep in mind this node. You want to put a point in this so it triggers ca shadow cascade immediately after you fill this node in. Yeah? Then once you've gotten this, you can fill in the rest of the mana, fill in the rest of the CDR, fill in the rest of the movement, and then you can make a choice between either extra Shadow Dagger applications when you shift, or the cull effect. Different people could make different arguments for which one is better. I prefer the Shadow Dagger thing. I don't think it really matters all that much. You can choose whichever one you want. Okay, next we can go ahead and talk about Shadow Cascade. Shadow Cascade is kind of what makes this whole build function the way it does by giving you a whole crap ton of mana back after you shift and applying a million shadow daggers from all your shadows after you shift. So you want to go directly into this mana thing because without this mana thing, it's not really all that helpful to be triggering cascade from shift. After that, you want to get up to the shadow daggers thing and then you go to into this uh, increased damage thing last. If you don't want this increased damage thing because you're maybe dual wielding or something, so you have higher damage already, you can go into this frailty chance instead. Those are both legitimate options. I've seen a lot of people go into this flow state thing, but honestly, Shadow Cascade itself does kind of minimal damage, and this should not affect the Shadow Daggers that are applied. 
Okay, next we have Sync Strike. Basically, the whole purpose of Sync Strike, if you haven't played Rogue before, is to generate shadows. Now, you have an option with Sync Strike here of either taking this node or not. If you're low health, you absolutely take this node. And if you're a high health version, it's up to you. You'll do more damage, it'll be more bursty, but you might find yourself having more mana problems. So you're gonna have to make that decision for yourself. As far as leveling sync, I would go into the mana efficiency first so that it's not so painful to use. Then go into dark allies if you're going to use dark allies. Then you go into the shadow dagger part. And then last, I would do the Fizz Shred and this Jump Forward thing. This Jump Forward thing is also something you may or may not use. It's kind of a playstyle thing. This node increases your single target DPS and consistency significantly, but it does actually lower your clear speed just a little bit sometimes because like, the spread sometimes actually helps when killing lots of trash. But on bosses, this is significantly better particularly because it also allows your Fizz Res Shred and Armor Shred from Sync to be very consistent on single target. Okay, last we talk about Smoke Bomb. Smoke Bomb's not really that important in this build. Um, the main highlight of Smoke Bomb, I think, is that this node right here seems kind of like a small amount of damage, but because it stacks and you kind of have a low percent increase to begin with with Shadow Daggers, this ends up being very, very powerful in this build. Um, as far as the order that you go in for this stuff, it just doesn't even matter. Just do it however you want. If you want shadows first, do that. If you want the stacking thing first, do that. Uh, the cleanse, you probably don't want that first, but if you want it, have at it. And then the same with the dust shroud. These points can be moved on however you want. If you happen to have cleanse on your belt, feel free to get rid of this stuff and, and put some stuff in here. You could also put a point into slow if you found this to be very helpful it could be quite good you could take a point out of duration and just slam it into slow you could even put some armor shred stacks on instead of the shadows if you want like it's it's pretty malleable and it's not really that important except for this this is very important for boss dps okay next we can go ahead and go over the gear now this version that i'm playing right now as you can see is a low health version and we can start by talking about the low health stuff. So four of the uniques you see me wearing are basically only there because I'm a low health version. So we start with Exsanguinous, right? If you're a low health build and you can wear it, you pretty much always wear Exsanguinous. It's just kind of a mainstay of low health builds working. Um, next we have the gloves. Now this thing, these gloves don't make a whole lot of sense other than the last line. And the last line is basically the entire reason you wear these gloves, because getting ward retention without them is basically impossible as a rogue unless you want to break all your stats and stack int, which would be kind of weird. The last piece of the standard uh, low health thing are these boots, which also come for Formosis, so that's kind of convenient. Uh, you don't have to wear these, it's just like a lot more uh, ward generation, right? Because you're siphoning even more of your health from these. And then this bone clamor is also part of the whole ward setup and it's totally not necessary either but the ward per second that it generates along with a necrotic res and the dex and it's just like a really good combination of stats you don't have to wear this bone clamor for high for high health or low health but if you have a good one it's quite powerful and last we have the smoke weaver this is pretty much just like something you want because of the shift cooldown. It makes your DPS go up a lot by virtue of being able to shift sync shift far more often, which is kind of the limiter because you're basically always just waiting for shift's cooldown. The fact that it reduces the shift distance is actually a good thing. It sounds bad, but it's actually good because it makes it easier to perform the combos in rapid succession correctly, yeah? You don't have to use Smoke Weaver. If you don't use Smoke Weaver, the other options are either a Chris or a Katana. You can only use a Katana if you're dual building because you do have to be wearing at least one dagger. All right, so as far as the rest of the gearing goes, um, I recommend you wear a shield with this build. I know a lot of people wear two daggers, but like you do so much damage with this build 
that I feel like it's just massive overkill to dual wield. Of course, if you just want flavor because you're a rogue and you want to Omega clap things, feel free to dual wield. It'll just make you a lot squishier. Um, as far as other gearing goes, you pretty much just want to stack crit multi, throwing damage, and fizz percent, right? You want to get crit avoid on at least one piece so that your blessing can take care of the rest. And then for idols, the fizz pen one you see here plus the armor shred duration is very good. And also ones like this where it has shred armor on melee hit with elemental res, that's particularly good for the low health version. And if you're the low health version, you kind of want to gather a whole bunch of these guys because you really want to have as much cold res as you possibly can to get yourself some crazy ward like you see here. One last thing for the gearing, you really, really, really want CDR in both the boots and the belt if you can. Just like with the smoke weaver for shift cooldown, getting shift cooldown increases your DPS by large amounts and increases your clear speed by large amounts. Okay, last we can go ahead and talk about the passives. I'm not gonna go in depth with passives because rogue passives are just, they're all just kind of really powerful, but I will highlight a few uh, standout things. First of all, this Swift Assassin node has pretty low value. It sounds kind of good, but attack speed for throwing does almost nothing. It's basically just flat physical. That's like almost the, almost the only benefit you get from this node. So this is like the last thing I'm doing because it has very low value. Um, the flat melee and throwing node you see right here is exceptionally powerful on this build because you double dip with this node because you get benefit from both melee and from throwing flat on Shatter Daggers. Um, this Death's Door node, it's mandatory if you're playing low health and it's one of the two main reasons to play low health, but if you're high health, it's kind of bad. So keep that in mind. And then this Shadow node Putting more than one point into this node serves almost no purpose because your shadow damage doesn't actually matter. You just need the shadows to apply the shadow daggers, yeah? So basically you put one point in this just so you get up to five shadows with a sink instead of four. All right, that's pretty much it for the passives. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you some example echoes so you can see what it's like in practice. Thanks everybody, have a good one. This is it, this is the 2LP Apathies Ma. Nothing will remain. Not with that attitude, it won't. I'm kind of just killing him because I want Apathy's Ma. But I guess we just keep pushing it up until it's like hard, right? Okay, he didn't die instantly, so... The difference is noticeable. You know, I will say one thing. The, the extra movement speed makes those axe guys less dangerous. I believe. Where'd he go? Where are you? Oh, I put that way too far away. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, 
Amulet, really? Bro. Oh, well, with Haste Shrine, we don't really need to play as carefully. <laughs> Look how fast we are with the Haste Shrine, guys. Dumb. Well, what are those guys? They were drifting! Those dinosaurs were drifting. Did you guys see it? They're like race car dinosaurs. <laughs> My mom said I could be anything. So I became a race car. Wow, what? Oh, dude, I'm lagging all over the place. I am rubber banding all over the place, man. The, ga the game can't handle 150% movement speed. <laughs> <laughs> it can't handle it. It's too fast. <laughs> oh, that was scary. How would you even cheat in LA? I don't know. Packet Trapper? A very, very advanced Packet Trapper. That's how you'd do it. It would be theoretically possible. I'm a blade dancer, Wolf. I, yeah, I'm... I'm a mid-range. That's true. Shadow Daggers is mid-range, kind of. Right, like, you kind of, you need to hit them in melee with your sink, ideally, but... But you can stay away from them. Like, I could kill them without swinging at them. Like, technically, right? I don't actually need to hit him with a sing strike to kill him. It's just more efficient. <laughs> 